Hello, and welcome back to the Interactive and Immersive HQ. My name is Joel. You know me as No Host. I'm an audiovisual artist, creator, and all round touch designer enthusiast. Today, I wanted to talk about using feedback in post processing to create some interesting glitchy effects. We'll be creating something that looks a little bit like this. Hopefully, it'll highlight how to use feedback beyond just normal comping a render on top of itself and also hopefully to highlight how to think about how feedback works so that you can apply it and use it in different areas of tops whether that's for uv maps for um for masks or for post-processing like we've done here so let's get started i'm gonna go into an empty project i'm gonna turn this one off and start from the very beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and make the network that we saw in the beginning. That's going to be a box and a copy. And then I'll set up my render network. Add a geometry node and a camera and a light here. And then also a render top as well. I'm going to leave this at this resolution is fine. For our effect for feedback, I am going to move it to 16-bit float. Then in our geometry, I'm going to add a line material. So add a line. I'm going to change these widths to 1. Change a few of these parameters to so make it white. Decrease the alpha. Turn on blending here. And I'm going to set this depth test function to always. For alpha and wireframe geometry, I find that the depth test function set to always has the best results. So I'll put this on here. And in order to view it, I'm going to add a null here. Turn on the display flag by pressing D. And then add a transform here. In order to get a black background, just turn this on, compo the background. So we have this example here. I'm going to set up some constants really quick. So we've got some control over this network here. So add a constant chop and attach this to a null. I'm going to call this constants. Then we're going to control a few things for our copy. So Firstly, the number of copies, then the angle, so how much our boxes are going to rotate, and scale, how much our boxes are going to scale. So for scale, I'm going to do 0.99. For angle, 0.5. So every box rotates 0.5 degrees. And we're going to have 50 copies. So I'm going to assign these to our copy parameter. Number of copies, 50. Rotate by 0.5 degrees, so very subtle movement between each one, and reduce that scale as well. Turn these displays off because we don't need them, and we'll play with our alpha. Bring that down a little bit more as well. We'll probably increase the number of copies to 80 or something like that. I'm also going to add some movement to my geometry node here using ABS time and times that by five. I'm going to apply this expression to the rotation for the X, the Y, and the Z axes. So we have this dynamic composition now that we're going to use as our base. You could use anything for this. I just think this is a cool example. It works with the glitchy aesthetic that we have going on. So one of the most common uses for feedback is to create a sort of blurring effect where we're merging a feedback layer with this new layer in some way. You might use something like an add or a screen or something. For now, I'm going to use a cross, which merges two sources um, depending on this fader. When something is all the way one way, it's the first source, and all the way the other way, it's the second source. If we add this into our feedback, and the slider is all the way at one, 
That means we're only going to get this new network cooking. When we slide it all the way to zero, we only get the feedback. If it has no other compositing, it's just going to stay completely still. It's only when you merge them in between where you get a sort of a blurring effect. In the case of cross, we have to put it quite low. Um, but as you can see, when it's around this value, we get a super interesting blurring effect. You can do a very similar thing using compositing with adding and just uh, blending the level of the two things. But feedback is more than just this blurring effect. If we set it to zero, then we're only getting a static or delayed image. And when we set it to one, we're getting the new network. So how can we merge these to get this sort of glitchy, delayed buffer effect? Well, the way we're going to do it is with masks. So instead of blending two images on top of each other, we're actually going to put part of the cooking network onto this static feedback node, which is just staying as an older version of our image in our compositing. So for instance, if we were to set this to an under, we currently have this new one being overlaid on top of the feedback top. The, the key though to create different patches of old images and different patches of new images is to use a mask. So the easiest way to create a mask would be to use something like noise. If you add a noise from our main network here, set it to just be noise here, and then add a threshold, we have this mask map, two values. We have a bright value, which is this, this white value, and then we have this other value, which is just the alpha in between. Now, if we add a multiply to this, multiply it to our original, we now have a mask of our new values that we can place on top of this static feedback node. So if we just put this in, Based on the mask, we have different parts of our feedback loop updating. So as we change this threshold, the mask is overlaying more of our original. If we were to add some movement to our mask, so add some evolution to our noise, maybe it's time dot seconds. Let's say time's not 0.1, maybe a little bit faster, not 0.5 maybe, and change our threshold a little bit. Now we're changing which parts of our feedback network is being updated. This is the foundation for how the glitch effect is going to work. We just need to make it a bit more glitchy. <laughs> so one way to do that is just to add a limit into our noise source. Set our quantize to be round. And now our mask is more blocky. And so the blockiness is going to reduce, is going to create some interesting blocks and shapes going on. So this effect is already pretty good in itself, but we can make this mask more interesting. And the more interesting we make this mask, the more impactful our network is going to be. So a way to create some more glitching in our mask would be to create some more limits. So I'm just going to copy this four times and change this amount. So bring this down slightly, bring this down even more, bring this up a little bit and then add a composite and composite these all together on difference. You could use any sort of algorithm for this, but for the difference, it just highlights all the changes between these ones here, which is useful for what we need here. And now we have a mask that has a lot more interesting irregular shapes, but it's still blocky, so it still feels interesting and glitchy. And now as we change this threshold value, we're changing how the mask is updating and therefore how the image is updating underneath it. So just as a quick recap, the areas that have alpha in this mask are not being updated in our feedback. If you remember back to the cross example, when it was set all the way to zero, it's just going to stay the same. So these areas where no new information is being added onto our composite here means that we're leaving behind older versions of the network that we're creating. 
Now using a threshold for the mask is pretty interesting because we have access to this soften parameter. It gives a smoother effect. It's blurring smoother over time. This is very similar to how we used the cross and the composite in the original example, where you add varying amounts of opacity, you're creating a smoother blurring over time. Where the borders of the mask are sharper, you're creating sharper edges. I'll have a look at another feedback effect. This one is very similar to our compositing blurring effect, but I just want to show you the different things that you can do. So I'll add another feedback here and I'll add a, I'll add a cross for this as well, actually. And again, I'll cross these two sources and then set the cross to be the target on our feedback. And we've got to bring this cross level much lower to get a blurring effect here. And now what we can do is have a look at intercepting this feedback chain that's going into this cross, this composite, whatever's going on here. That will impact what's happening every single frame. So for instance, you could add a transform. If I was to set this to pixels and set this value something low, like four pixels, Ah, well, we can see. <laughs> Maybe I will use an add here instead. Add this to our original and set this to be the source instead. So we're getting this movement, but it's extremely bright again. So I'm going to add a level here and reduce this opacity. And then I'm also going to add a limit again at the end so that the whole thing can get normalized. And I'll mask out the alpha again as well. So without the transform, we're not getting this movement. And with the transform, we're getting everything kind of floating upwards. You could lean into the blurrer even more by adding a blur to this network, to this section here. It makes it even more smoky, even more ethereal. I'd like to add this smoke network to the original here. So let's add them together. I'm gonna add that with an add. Add them together. Oh, I've got to add it from the limit so that it's all nicely composited here. And I might even add another level and just bring the opacity down. Then at this point, you can do all sorts of glitchy things you might want to do. You could add some additional displacement. You could add some color. You could add some grain. You could add something like a Lens distort, kind of give yourself a CRT vibe, maybe. Yeah, let's let's get some interesting grid stuff going on. So if we were to go into the palette, have a look at the generators and go at the checker here. We have this checker effect set to the set to the resolution that our render is. And then I'm gonna add an edge to this so we get all the gaps in between. Let's try displacing this with the edge here. We'll set our source midpoint to zero. As we change the number of squares in our checker, we instantly get a sort of CRT grid vibe, which I think is interesting. Um, you could also use an outside, I believe would do a similar thing. So have your outside being your source network. It's gonna use the brightness values of the second input to take away from the first. I'm also going to add transform on the end again so we can get our black background back. You do lose a little bit of color because you're losing uh, bright pixel values. If you were to use something like a blur and set the blur to sync mode, you get a little bit of brightness back and also get that CRT vibe a little bit more as well. You could add a brightness, you could add a bloom or something like that as well. Reduce the bloom radius. Just add something like a quick ramp as well for a look up. And you've got yourself a really interesting glitchy composition here. So this is the final effect that we've made. Anything that you can do in tops, you can use feedback to amplify the effects that you already have, such as this bloomy, smoky thing going on. 
instead of just adding a stretched out version with a blur. You're adding this transform, which is adding movement. And you can also use it for time-based effects like this glitchy thing here. So I hope that was useful. I hope you got some takeaways from it. And yes, happy visualizing. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.